Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Everybody needs a bus, they just don't know it yet. <laughs> My name is Mark Clark, I am the Managing Director of Combus. We formed our company in 1999 with four other directors and shareholders. I've chosen to talk to you today about running my own business, how I survive through the challenges. This is done through a strong vision, determination, risk taking and a firm believer that I can succeed. Combus is a roadshow and event support company. We started the company to serve local outdoor events be before diversifying. Combus is now primarily an exhibition company. We supply bespoke services using converted buses, coaches, trailers, custom creations and a variety of roadshow and exhibition promotional and event uses. Our mobile solutions provide you with the unique opportunity to meet your customers to ensure that your event runs smoothly. Your show on the road to your customer's doorstep. It's a long story. I've got a friend called Steve. He had a bus that was called Media Bus. We used to use this bus for outdoor events. We used it for green rooms. We used it for dressing rooms, <coughs> backstage hospitality. Public address systems we had based on there. We had the mixing desk on the upper deck to look over the whole field. It was used as a backstage position. He found that he had too much work for this bus. He got a load of his friends together, of which I was one. We sat round the table and said we've got a little bit of work for this bus, too much for one person, not enough for five, what should we do? Should we get rid of the bus, close it all down and forget about it or should we try and work together and get the bus out and do more work on the road? We decided to form a limited company. I was quite young at the time, this was uh, 15 years ago. <laughs> We got our bunch of friends together, we sat around the table and we said, OK, what should we do? We can carry on doing the public address work, having the bus as a backstage hospitality, or we could diversify a little bit. We thought, well, let's just carry on as we are at the moment, using that bus to be our base for, for the unit. We sat down and decided, what should we call the company? Well, what did we do? We did public address and we had had the bus, we did backstage hospitality, so communications and a bus, so we called the company naturally Combus. We wanted Combus um, to, to, to engage what we did and get it all together. It was the year 2000. We thought the internet was the way forward, so we registered our company as Combus.com Limited, now just known as Combus. We all put £100 each into the company. I decided that I needed an identity for the company, so I thought what can we do to get this identity? When we go out on site we're going to need to be seen, so I thought well we'll dress in black combats, black t-shirts, the logo on the breast, and that's it. So the £500 didn't go very far, I spent the money straight away. Some of the first jobs that we did was one of the first jobs we did, the first job in fact in uh, 1999-2000 was for the Millennium. The bus was used for the backstage hospitality in Centenary Square. We thought what should we do, how can we get seen out there? So. We stuck straight across the, the centre of the bus, this black bus by then, www.combus.com. We thought that's it, we're going to make it here, everyone's going to see us, they'll be looking at our website. P 
people drive up and down Broad Street in Birmingham, they'd see us. That bus there was used for the backstage for Sir Cliff Richard. Several acts, including, you might all be a bit too young for this, but Barney the Dinosaur, he was one of the people that we had on our vehicle. <laughs> What, one of the next jobs that we did, following on from that one, somebody saw us, actually saw us on that job and thought, oh, they could use that bus and a hospitality unit. So it was a company who was doing some work for um, Vodafone. And we thought, this is it, we're, we're making it here. Vodafone, this is grand. Thank you very much. So we took that bus down and the bus was to be used as a backstage unit in Earl's Court and that was going to be used for the backstage hospitality, backstage office, the police control room, the event security and things in there. So the bus was parked up. There was 12,000 people seated at Earl's Court and we were at the heart of this. So we thought we've made it. We went from Vodafone, we went to, for roadshows for ITV. We were on our way up. Roadshows all over the country. And then disaster struck. Foot and mouth in 2001 wiped our business out. We were doing country shows, we were travelling up and down the country into fields and sites where the whole country was shut down as far as the events and outdoor events were, were con concerned. What were we to do now? We needed to diversify again. We thought okay Charity balls, indoor balls, they're the thing to do because it doesn't involve anything outdoors. We'll just go and do a load of work inside. We thought, how are we going to get into this? Well, we'd met some people along the way through ITV and the Vodafone and things like that. Asked, how do we get into this? We've got a load of public address equipment. We've got a load of lights. We've got the ability to put on shows, build stages. So slowly people started coming to us saying, oh, can you ask, can you do this, can you do this for us? Yeah, we can do that, if the money's right. Unfortunately, sometimes the money wasn't right, but we needed to keep the company going, but ticking over slowly. So one of the balls was to go in at six o'clock in the morning, start setting the stage up, start putting the lighting up, start putting the sound up, run the show, do the get out, by this time it was six o'clock in the morning. We went from six o'clock in the morning till six o'clock the next morning, no sleep, so we obviously we're up at half past four in the morning, no sleep. This was not a good business model. But at that six o'clock in the morning, we had a gin and tonic to celebrate our uh, ball success as it were. Six o'clock to me now is known in the morning is now known as gin and tonic time. One day I had a phone call from Steve, who had the original bus. He said to me, Mark, go up to the bus station and go and get the bus and bring it to me at the BBC. I thought, what is this about? This was nine o'clock at night at this time. What would they want this for? I drove down Pebble Mill Road in Birmingham to find a load of drunken people on the side of the road. Now, we didn't carry passengers in our vehicles. But these people slowly started getting on the bus and I thought, what is going on here? Steve has set us up with something wrong here. These people got on the bus, they'd been at a meeting at the BBC. Steve had talked to them at the meeting about this bus could be used to take your equipment around and go and demonstrate it to people. I didn't know this at the time and these people were just saying, yeah, yeah, this is a great idea. It was at that point one of the lads said to me, yeah, we could take all of our film editing equipment around on this bus. I couldn't believe it. I thought. I'm a hearing right here, How are we going to be onto a good thing again here? This company was called Avid and they are an American film editing company. Some of you might have heard of Avid, some of you might not. We went out, uh, I was so embarrassed about the state of that bus that we had before that I actually went out and bought this bus nearly bankrupting us and this bus at that time was 20 odd years old because I thought that we've got to get the image of the company looking right. We couldn't have the old black bus, it had to be a new shiny bus. We went to West Midlands Travel and said to them, 
have you got any buses? Oh yes, this one's just coming off service, this one will be ideal for you. And I thought, well this is good, people are talking to us and the bus will be ideal for us. Very naively I said, yeah, yeah, that, that bus will be great if you say that that bus is good for us, that would be fantastic. Not the case. We drove the bus out of the bus garage, we'd already got it booked into a spray shop, we'd got it booked in ready for some work. We were drove, dr driving down the road, we got, we got down to the, to the spray shop, we'd seen the spray shop man, yeah bring it here after you've had the work done in the inside, that was fine. Got down to go do, got down to refurb the bus, we started off, yes, yes, Avid said to us, how long can you be ready, how long will it take you to be ready, and I naively again said, oh we'll be ready in about six weeks, don't worry, you'll be kitted out ready for you to, to go on the road. It was at that point that the bus builders that we'd taken it to said to us, oh dear, the back end of the bus is falling off here. And I said, what do you mean it's falling off? Well, it's full of rust, they said. So I didn't know what else to do other than to phone the client and tell them, I am sorry, we can't meet your deadline of six weeks. I thought, that's it, we've just got a rust bucket here and we've had, the, had it now. The client what loved us so much that our ideas that they wanted to go on the road and they said don't worry let us know when this bus will be ready that was such a relief to us we went on the road with them for two weeks displaying their film editing equipment we went to the bbc we went to itv we went to border television we went all around the country england ireland scotland and wales probably the best two weeks of my life this was at this point thinking that here I am, we've made it, we've built this company and we've made it, we're out on the road again. The bus then got parked up for a, a few months and we thought, what are we going to do now? But strangely, slowly, people started seeing us out on the road and seeing that we were doing a job and said, can we go out on the road? So we had another job and another job and another job. The bus wasn't redundant yet. Avid then came to us and said, later on, could we go on the road for a, another couple of weeks in a few months time and I said of course you could yes we'll uh, get the bus back out we'll you know rebrand it and things we went out on the road there for another two weeks with them we then got back in, into our base and then we were summoned to go to the BBC the BBC bar this was so they like to drink these people did as from the first story when they're all on the side of the road they said, um, we're thinking about going to uh, Europe, um, you know, what advice can you give us about doing this? So we said, well, you know, you really need to do this, you really need to do that and the other and, you know, which particular vehicle should we use? I gave them all this advice and thinking, you know, are they going to ask us to go to Europe with them? So I, I posed the question to them, I said, would you consider us taking you to Europe? And they said, why do you think you're here? We wouldn't consider anybody else. There's another relief. Now, I knew the size of their checkbook by this time. So they were saying to me, we want this particular coach. And I said, well, yeah, I've advised you should have this one. Yeah, they said to me, go out and find us the best vehicle you can find to go and do this job. And I said, well, this is going to cost you, you know, £250,000, you know, for this brand new vehicle. Don't worry about it. So I thought, oh, I'm going to go out and buy the best vehicle I could find. So I started inquiring, how, what's the lead time for this new vehicle? What's this and what's that? And they said, no, sorry, we can't wait that long. They wanted to be on the road pretty soon. So I had to go out and buy the, the next best, not the next best vehicle, but the next best um, age of the vehicle down. So I bought a coach which at that time was about four years old. And they loved this coach. They, they loved the idea of going out on the road into Europe. So I went out and bought this um, Caspora Cetra, which is the Rolls Royce of coaches. I don't know if anybody knows anything about buses or coaches, do you? No, 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 okay. Perhaps I'm just the sad one here. <laughs> it's got a Mercedes engine, just right for touring all over Europe. So we then toured 26 countries, including Russia. We went from UK to Denmark. We went from Denmark down to Germany, down to Spain, Italy. We covered the whole of Europe. It was just a fantastic time of our life. And then ferries back into the UK. 
there's us just on one of the uh, ports just waiting to come back into Britain from Spain I think that was but it's not all plain sailing there were those people that enjoyed the glory rather than the work I felt that I was carrying the rest of the people around the rest of my colleagues around with me to them it was just a job to me it was a lifestyle business and friends don't always mix it's a lifestyle which I am passionately involved I started my passion of buses when I worked for a company called Hallmark they were based down in Colesville they also had a base in Glasgow, Luton all over the country they were quite a big independent coach company their style of servicing people was it had to be airline style the highest of standards they had tabled coaches we had hostess services and I thought this is the way I want my life to be you know up at that level there we had the best coaches after I left Hallmark we I, I went on to be a passenger transport consultant I went to work for the Foreign Commonwealth Office. I was still based in Colza where we are now. I had a huge contract there. We worked for the G8 summit, I worked on the EU summits. It all sounds glamorous, but this is not glamorous at all in the events industry all of the time. The events industry is a way of life. From my experience, you need a good support team around you. It's essential to have good partners around you, good teams around you, good life partners, office partners, yard crew, good business people, a first class solicitor, a cute accountant to forecast for you, a good computer technician. With a support team around you, us being such a small company, I'm proud to have worked with so many people, names and brands. I've worked with Cliff Richard, as mentioned before, UB40, Vivian Westwood pictured there, Boris Becker and Tim Hemman. They were doing a, a charity event with aerial tennis, an aerial tennis competition. Razor Light, The Feeling, The Levelers at festivals. Some of the other clients we've worked for is Asda, Tesco's, Lidl. Now Lidl came to us and they said, we want a bus on the road and we want to tour all of our 126 sites around Ireland and we want to do it in about 11 days time. So we had this bus just painted up silver there and they wanted to go on it in 11 days time and I just said yes we'll do that yes so there we are in 11 days we had a bus we kitted it out on the inside and turned it around got it branded up and went to tour 126 places in Ireland we've worked with numerous universities we've worked with Holiday Inn Express now that was a guerrilla marketing campaign. They wanted to go around to rival hotels and all over the country saying, wake up to your free breakfast. So they were the only people at that time offering a free breakfast to people that stayed in their hotels. We nearly got arrested on that job. We were driving into Premier Inn car parks, the Hilton car parks, showing off the bus and giving away free breakfasts. Nobody was happy. We've worked for Ray-Ban. ITV. With ITV we went out on the road and they were showing how you could interact with people and we had a live studio set up in the bus and we did live broadcasts from there. The BBC. Unison. Unite the Unions. The NHS. City councils up and down the country. That end picture there is for a kite festival down in South Sea. We were doing public address for that and there's all the kites flying there. We worked with Sony, that was for a ph ph photography competition. People were travelling around on the buses taking pictures and they were all entered into a competition. 
who work for South West Trains, East Midlands Trains. They're for health and safety roadshows, so all the, they go around to all the stations and get all their workers on board and teach them about health and safety and give them health checks. The Queen's Baton Parade. And the big issue. Now the big issue only had a small place to be. Um, this, was, this was in Leadenhall Market. And they said, we want the open top bus to go in there. And I said, well, we don't have room to get the open top bus in there. I'll make something. So I invented the land stage. That's a Land Rover with a stage on the top. And the big issue with the first people to use that. National Apprenticeship Services. The British Red Cross. They came to us and they wanted to demonstrate how their charity shops would be. So we got the bus, we converted it into a charity shop and we had upstairs was the, the shop back shop where they would teach them how to uh, iron and how to put all the brands in together. Downstairs was an actual charity shop where they actually took money on the bus. Danone. Twyford Bathrooms. This again is not too far away from here and this is to demonstrate you can have anything you want on the bus. Tullamore Jew, this again is inside a bus. A full working whiskey bar and gallery upstairs. <coughs> These are just a few of our clients, but what I want to say is never get too complacent. You think you're successful. And I always believe there's need for diversification. We started with one bus and now we have 11. Diversification is always in the back of our mind. But you never know what's around the corner. Keep your ears and eyes open for new opportunities. This slide here is, yes, not always buses. As you can see in the slide, there's a picture of the land stage. There's a picture of two carnival floats and one of our open top buses. They came to us, this was the Israeli, closer to Israeli, 65 anniversary. They came to us and said, we want an open top bus. We said, no problem, we'll give you an open top bus. They said, well, we want two open top buses. We said, no problem, we'll give you two open top buses. So we had to hire in another bus. The end of the conversation, they wanted 10 open top buses, two carnival floats and the land stage. So we just said, yes, we'll do that. And they wanted some public address on. That is always the need for diversification. Keep your mind open to new opportunities. Again, not always buses. Continental Tyres came to us and said that they wanted a full-size six-foot armadillo inside a tyre on the back of a lorry. We said, no problem, we'll do that. <coughs> Me saying, no problem, we'll do that, gets people into a lot of trouble, actually. <laughs> Me especially. They then wanted us to brand a car up for them to travel around with them. They then wanted to brand the van up. Yes, we'll do that. Spray the wheels up in the bottom left there, you can see. I sprayed those wheels myself. <laughs> Never take your eye off the ball. Everything about the company is one big juggling game. Juggling the figures. Should we buy new kit? Should we employ some more people? One false move and it could all be gone. I am passionate about Combus and its future. I have now diversified again this year. This is our new venture. It's a one-off best boat build. It's not in our business model to go out and buy somebody else's conversion, but this was too much of a good opportunity to miss. I went to a 25th wedding, wedding anniversary and this bus was the centrepiece of the anniversary. They knew I had an interest in buses. I was upstairs talking to the owner of the bus just having a drink and then she said 
you've got to buy this bus. And I said, why me? She says, because I know that you've got a passionate for buses. And I said, it's not me that you need to speak to. It's Claire, that's my other half. Just me biding a bit of time there. I loved the idea. When Claire came to the party, she said, this is great, we could market this bus. And I said, Claire, actually they want us to buy it. She says, no, no, no more buses. Remember we had one, now we've got 11. It's just a bit too much sometimes. That's 11 headaches, by the way, plus the staff that we get to drive them. By the end of the night, we'd arranged a meeting with them. They were coming to see us because of the, the possibility of us buying that business off them. It, it was amazing. This was back in June. Now it's taken me this long, I've just, just got my hands on this vehicle, it's taken this long because one thing or another, work and solicitors taking a huge amount of time and a huge amount of my money. Give you more of an insight into this, there's downstairs that you can seat five people inside the bar there's four windows to serve from. We can seat 180 guests downstairs in the marquee and the whole marquee is licensed for 300 people and upstairs is a luxury cocktail bar. It's all a risk. Everybody needs a bus, they just don't know it yet. Has anybody got any questions? I love answering questions. Yes? Because of how diverse the business is, uh, what are your main competitors? Yes, um, in the exhibition side of things there are about uh, five other companies that do what we do. But we do it to the best of standard, or so we think. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yes? Um, yes, it, in the beginning we started off being the public address company and doing lots of country shows. But now because of the, the, the diverse of the company now, we, we, we don't only do the country shows, we go out on the road and do other things and travel more in cities and things now rather than just doing the country shows. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, it's all about keeping your eye on the ball and keeping your eye on the money, that's, that's my main challenge. Um, as I said earlier on, it's all a big juggling game. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, should I take on more staff? Should I buy more equipment to attract more people to see what we've got? Never take your eye off the ball. And people may have said this to you before, but you are only ever two paychecks away from not having your company at all. You know, if somebody, if one client doesn't pay you, you can hold out for a little while. If another client doesn't pay you, that's it. You know, it, it's, it's devastation is just round the corner, always. I'm always on edge, and that's how a lot of companies, you know, go. But anybody else? I'm just interested. Do you do like all the sign writers that come to you? Like you were saying, do you do everything like you do? Yes, we do. Yes. We, we have partners that are closely working with us that we do, so we, we have a base and we have people come in to us. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't have a full, well in fact we in, at one time we employed eight people, there's just three of us now. I've learnt that to cut the cost right down, I'll get rid of everybody. That was the hardest decision to do and then get people in as and when we, we, we need stuff, yeah, and, and, and then we can survive, yes. Anybody else?